the most eclectic museums in, in, in the world and I was wondering what, what, what are the challenges of surprising your, your public and your audiences year after year? Um, do you become more disruptive or do you go back to classical museum tradition? What's, what's the well, trick? There is, there is room for all of that because we're trying to speak to as many people as we possibly can. Um, so there's room to do what might be seen as traditional, traditional, and also what might be seen as something that's really cutting edge. The, you know, you mentioned the collection and how eclectic it is, and it's incredibly large. We have over two million objects in the collection, yes, yes, yes. Um, and and that sort of that's actually an opportunity to to pick out, you know, to draw out individual objects that might not be known by the public, known by audiences in the same way that they know some of our more iconic works and actually to, to begin telling those kinds of stories. So the collection actually is the basis for what we can do, you know, to, to build the programme and this, you know, the, the exhibitions programme which people know so well, things like Dior, which we have on right now. Um, you know, those, those exhibitions and those ideas are drawn from the, the objects and the works that we have collected since the museum was founded in the 19th century. as the collection is, um, so too are the collecting departments. So we have you know, a, a department that collects word and image, um, a, a department that is specifically looking at... And this is ongoing? Absolutely ongoing, yes. yes they spot ongoing. something and... We, we have um, an active uh, process of acquisitions. I wouldn't say we don't buy as, as much as other organisations might, um, you know, because our resources are limited, but we are constantly acquiring new works. And that might be, uh, you know, historic works where we have gaps in the collection for the work and image department, for instance, or that might be um, contemporary fashion. Uh, it might actually be works of digital art that don't exist, you know, until they are actually created as meant by, by the artist. So, you know, all of the departments we have are still collecting and those departments also have the individual expertise of those curators looking at quite precise subjects. So they're, they're out there hunting for, for new yes. pieces. Yes. And once you acquire these pieces, uh, somebody starts seeing, okay, there's something here that could be exhibited in one collection. How does that creative process take place? So it's, it's very often driven by uh, what, are, what are the compelling ideas that a curator has come up with? Um, and equally, what what are the what are the compelling stories that the V and A wants to wants to talk about, and what are the things that our audiences want to look to us to to be told about? And and, and I think we we often come up with ideas, and we think that's what the audience wants to hear. But it's equally important for us to understand what the audience wants out of us. We are a public organisation; it's a national collection, and it isn't just a case of us telling people things that we want to say. It's also knowing. What do people want to know about, and what are the ways in which they want to hear and experience and those how do you, stories? How do you test that? How how do you get to know what they're demanding? One of the ways of doing that is by making sure you know that we keep people coming to the museum and that they talk to us about their experience here. So three and a half okay. million people coming in every year, actually having three and a half million those people. and that number that number goes up and up. We've been increasing over the past few years. Um, that actually gives us an opportunity to talk to the people who actually we're trying to serve with this program and to not make assumptions but actually understand how they have actually, you know, experienced their time with us. We have a very long history of, of presenting fashion exhibitions mm -hmm. at the VMA and presenting monographic fashion exhibitions at the VMA. Right. So Dior is an example, you know, of many. We've had Balenciaga, we've mm -hmm. had Alexander McQueen, Vivian right. Westwood. There have been many British and international fashion mm -hmm. designers who we have presented here, and that's actually something quite not not unique in that we're individually doing it around the world, but actually the way in which the VMA right. stages fashion exhibitions yes. is quite unique. We have Dior in our collection. Um, Dior is, in, uh, you know, was a designer who worked in the UK, had a very strong relationship with the UK. He obviously had an outpost in London. Um, you know, while he also had the start of his fashion house in Paris. 
Um, and he was collected and worn by lots of you know, significant known yes. individuals, as you will see when you go to the yeah. like royal family. So for us, this relationship with, with him as a maker and a designer, and also what that fashion house has become, is actually quite a natural story for us to be telling. For us, occasional visitors in, in London, we, but please correct me if, if I'm wrong, we felt that, that Maybe the David Bowie exhibition was a turning point for 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 the, the museum. Was this so, or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was a turning point in how we at the V and A, but I think also how we at the V and A presented performance. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, David Bowie, much more than a performer, he at the core was an absolute artist, artist and a thinker. Yes, yeah. um, but obviously, oh. one of the ways in which he communicated that was through performance. Yeah. It was a huge change for us in how we presented um, you know, film, AV footage, sound material within our exhibitions and I think has, has had a really big impact on how other organisations see the possibilities of presenting subjects like that. That at the time, again, a hugely successful exhibition which after it was on in London, then travelled to North America, to Latin America, to the Far East, um, across Europe, Australia. So really that exhibition was seen all over the world by over two million visitors. Right, you were telling me a few minutes ago that this was the first exhibit that really set foot in, in Latin, Latin America. America. The first VNA so. show that we've ever done and still the only one that we've done in Latin America. Wow. Yeah. So. And that, that, you know, that speaks to, uh, I think, one, the popularity and sort of um, interest in the individual, you know, the, the person who was the subject, but also uh, the, the sort of foresight of the person who brought that show with us to Latin America, seeing actually this is going to be something that the public are going to love and I want audiences there to experience it in traveling much more than they did in Victorian times for sure. They get to see the real David, they go to Japan, see the kimono collection, but what's the purpose of having a museum today? You know, for me, a museum is a place that's grounded in research and it's provocative, it's challenging, it's saying things necessarily that other places might not wish to be saying or feel comfortable saying. It operates you know, sort of separate from, from politics um, and it can, it can sort of take on messages and say things which, you know, uh, it's possible to do in the cultural sector that might not be in other realms because at the end of the day we are here, you know, looking after and trying to promote and communicate and give meaning to thousands of years of, of sort of cultural heritage that we have. Um, and although people are going to see things maybe, you know, where they are from necessarily, lots of people aren't. So for us, it's about sharing the collection, communicating meaning to objects and actually understanding that what we have in terms of objects and artworks, um, you know, that, that which has been made has an impact on changing people's lives. It inspires people, it makes people feel creative, it brings a quality of life, it improves quality of life. You're undergoing um, enormous political changes here. Uh, in, in, in the UK. Do you think this will affect the way the museum is going to be working in, in, in the near future and your contact with the rest of the world? The, for us, you know, we, we have, we've always been um, a, a fiercely international organization and that will only continue regardless of what happens. Um, our, you know, our collection is international, our workforce is international, and very importantly, our audience is international. And regardless of what happens, we have uh, uh, no interest in ex except for expanding that. Um, you know, our so relationships with organizations around the world, our desire to attract audiences here from other countries, that does nothing but grow with time. So, Victoria Nelson's doors will be open 100%. All of this belongs to everyone else.